now. Unlike the NFL, he has no neutral zone. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get on. No choice, we're going to manage you. Get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. We love that about you. Very funny comedian, Sam Tripoli, back in studio. Always good to see you, Sam. Honor and a privilege, brother. Thanks for having me. I love it. Sam's got a lot of hot takes. We'll get into those. <laughs> um, he has a podcast, Conspiracy Social Club, a.k.a. Deep Waters. It does it with our good friend Brian Callen as well. Uh, it's a new show on Rumble. New show on Doom Rumble. Doom scrolling. Doom, Doom scrolling. scrolling. Yeah. That is a great subject and a great, a great <laughs> title for a show. Good Thank to see you. you, Sam. Good, good to be here, Adam. Thanks for having me. So uh, it's funny you were yelling about legacy media moments before the mics got hot, and I, I was with uh, RFK Jr. last night. Oh, great! And uh, he was yelling about legacy media. <laughs> <laughs> he should. I mean, it's like kind of crazy how they're treating him. Yeah, well, the thing that's the thing that's I'll tell you the part that gets crazy. Um, it's one thing to just you know, crazy has a, a right and a left, and I don't mean politically. I mean it's like a yin and a yang. There's you know two sides 100%. Of, of crazy, right? First side of crazy is them telling us a bunch of lies and bullshit about it. Could be about COVID. It could be about January six. Could be Kyle Rittenhouse. Yeah. It doesn't matter. There's the the views version, right? That's Crazy part number one. Crazy part number two is when you then point things out to them that are wrong, them calling you crazy. That's the second part of this crazy. That's the second foot that drops in the march toward crazy mountain is the part where they go, oh, what about you? And it's like, what about me just being right about everything COVID? Why Why is that? Why am I you? Yeah, 100%. Why, why is this a conspiracy theory? Or he's getting his notes from Joe Rogan or something. Like, yeah, I'm right about everything. You yeah. guys lie about everything. And then they ban everybody. RFK Jr. is going, I can't go on ABC. I can't go on C uh, CNN. I, I'm banned for all these. And I'm like, hey, guess, join the club. Me, Dr. Drew, Mark Garagas, you, everybody, no longer welcome on any of these shows. And then he goes, only place I can go is Fox. And then they go, oh, you just go on Fox to take your marching orders from Sean Hannity. It's like, nope, they're the only one who'll have me because you guys block everybody who disagrees with you about any alternative viewpoints about COVID for three years on your show. Any, any, nope, they're all banned. And then they accuse Fox of conspiracy theories, except for Fox just lets Mark Aragos, me and Dr. Drew, come on and say whatever we want. So how's that work? It's crazy to me. Like, if you just watch, like, how the whole mass situation is, it's like you had people major, like, especially the comedy, major comedians gaslighting everybody into, like, hey, dude, stop questioning it. Just trust the science. And it, this is what cultural Marxism is. Cultural Marxism is to get you not to believe your eyes, your ears, or the wisdom of your experiences. And th if you have an idea that is truly genuine, it should be able to stay stand up to any criticism. Yes. And you, and, and you bring up a very point, which is the wisdom of your experiences. I did not need to go to the WHO's or the CDC's website to figure out if COVID was dangerous to my 14-year-old healthy son. Yeah. He's fine, and every fucking kid in our neighborhood is fine. So you can't tell me that this is going to kill them when I've not heard of one story of any of the kids. And I live in a neighborhood with tons of 14-year-old boys and girls. Nada. Nothing. 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 And the data right. showed that. And it, right. here's the biggest problem, Adam, right now is like we're in a battle of algorithms, too. Right, the, the, right now, you, you can be getting an algorithm that will never let you know that they are talking now up to or, upwards of 20 million people dying from the vaccine. They have uh, results of taking the vaccine. But if, if you're in a certain algorithm, you're never going to get it because some algorithms uh, just don't get all the information. Uh, I don't on Twitter. I don't care what your algorithm is. You're going to get snuff films. Apparently, like this is a new thing on Twitter where is it? like you can just be like, oh look at this kid. Oh, there's a girl twerking and someone just died. That and that we can get into the whole psychological effects of that. It, but it, it is interesting when you talk to people who just get their information from legacy media. Yes, like Mike August, friend and Booker and everything else. He just, that's all he gets his information. And I was 
eating dinner with him before the show last weekend. And he likes to talk politics. We're talking politics. I was saying, you know, I, you know, I think, um, I think the economy, you know, that's a big issue, number one. And the Democrats are going to get hurt by this whole border disaster. One hundred. Uh, everyone's migrants and border and stuff. And he goes, "What are you talking about?" And I'm like, "I said oh, the border. I mean, it's like people care about the economy first, probably the border second. I don't know, second or third, you know." And he goes. Nobody cares about the border. No one's talking about it. I said, yeah, it's a thing. It's a, it's a big thing. And he's like, I've never heard. First off, no one's talking about it. Nobody cares. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you just you read the Drudge Report every single morning, and then you see what's going on they on don't CNN. And, and it's like, he's like, it's a zero it's a zero issue. And I said, no, no, it's a big issue. It's gonna, it's, it's probably going to harm the Democrats. He's like, I don't even know. Nobody cares. I don't know what you're talking about. You and have, then I realized, oh, that's that's where you get your info. You have that with the Russia Gate, Russian collusion. I mean, like Hillary Clinton literally was fined by the election uh, board or the uh, the federal election committee for uh, uh, election interference. She had to pay a fine because she, they found out that she had funded the whole uh, steel report dossier. Yeah. Dossier, yeah. yeah. And, do you think anyone on the on the left would know that? Because if you you know, my girlfriend still watches MSNBC. It, it infuriates me, but I have to pick my battles with her. You know, and like you have to pick your battles. Right? I always say to people, people do. This, I talk to Drew about this all the time. It's like, oh, my wife thinks this or wants to do that, but I, she's wrong. But I don't want to get into it. And, and then he always goes, every guy's been married has a relationship. He goes, you got to pick your battles. Yeah. And then I realize. But that's what you would say if you're talking about a special needs nine year old. Like you're gonna upset, (laughs) you're gonna upset him if you talk to him about dinosaurs or something. It's like you understand if if, I I don't want anyone to say that about me. Pick you gotta pick. You know what you do. Anyone in a relationship with a woman just goes just keep walking. I tell guys bring stuff up. Give up. Just give up. Like, if you're in a relationship, you want to make it really work, give up. <laughs> and it's the best way to be it. And, like, you no. you and have you to have put to down be... your foot when you really matters, put down your foot. But outside of that, you you like, got to be like a dying Indian. You just got to go to the mountain and you just lay down. You know what I mean? <laughs> and there's a crow circling you and you close your eyes and you're having <laughs> dreams of being blown by a 21-year-old. You just, you just have to go to lay down a blanket, like a ceremonial blanket, and just die. And, and Otherwise, there's going to be arguments. Adam, here's what they do. They purposely <laughs> lie out the gate. They purposely lie in the legacy media because they know – that you just want to hear what you want to hear. So they yeah. tell you what you want to hear, which is a very left-sided side of the story, and then you just run off. And yeah. it's the old saying, what's well, it's it's easier to lie to somebody than to convince they've been lied to, and that's what happens. And you can get instance after instance after instance where they are still talking about the initial report which has been debunked whatever it is a thousand times they don't care. Well, there is an interesting psychodynamic which is people say do they know they're lying and i think people cut them some slack sometimes they go no they just didn't get all the info or they didn't gather the info but they're not they're not liars like i would always say like gavin newsom is he evil or just horrible (laughs) at at his job and i was like and we have these arguments where, like, no, he's not a bad guy. You know, he's a family guy. He's probably doesn't mean any harm. He's just right. horrible. And I was like, oh, okay, so cut him some slack, but give him some grace. But I was thinking about, it, like, what if you were talking about that? What if you had a warehouse and there's a guy who drove the forklift and he would just bash it into everything and knock over every shel- shelf? And you're like, you think Steve's bad at driving a forklift or does he hate our company and, go, and someone would go like, no, 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 leave him alone while he's knocking shit over in the back and punching holes in center block walls and scratching the side of your car. He's, he's not a bad he guy. Well. He just, yeah. he just can't drive a forklift. And okay. Let him drive the forklift then leave him alone. He doesn't mean any harm. That's basically what you have to think. But, but here's the, here's the equation. When you are earnestly conveying an idea or having a debate, or sharing information, and you turn out to be wrong, then you will go, I got this wrong. I got it wrong. Uh, If you're lying, you'll never say, I got it wrong, because psychologically, you knew you were lying in the first Mm -hmm. place. And that's what's going on. That's how you know they're lying. And and it's also like, like, 
if if he if it was just like he wasn't good at his job, occasionally he'd be on the right side of the discussion, right? He yeah. like once in a while, even if you're inept, you will get a, a broken clock's right twice a day. Right. But if you're always on the wrong side of the discussion, that means it's more purposeful, in my humble opinion. Well, it's true, but to give the world's worst forklift lift driver a break. He did not sign the bill to cancel Pee Wee football. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, that's yeah. something. Right. So you, I don't know if you saw, like, it, like Bill Maher's an interesting guy because, like, he gets it on some things and then some things he just <laughs> refuses to look at. But he had a really, real interesting discussion with Seth MacFarlane, who is, like, again, just, I, I don't know if he's just so successful, he's so detached from, like, the everyday guy, but, like, their discussion was basically, like, Seth MacFarlane's like, why don't you, we should just trust the people who get paid for by the legacy media over right. the people who are sitting at home doing nothing, and it's so disingenuous because the people at home, like, they have to put out the best product possible for you to watch it, and, and like, I know so many independent content creators who just work so hard on a video hoping you'll watch it and the notion that the people who get a paycheck from the people who get a paycheck from the people you're supposed to criticize they're on the right side it's just yeah. ridiculous to me and, and by the way but cnn is gonna have rfk jr come on and talk shit about big pharma for a 10-minute segment <laughs> when 90% of their advertising yep. is from Big Pharma. Yep. That, not going to happen. Not yeah. going to happen. So, but, but here's all I'm saying. I understand what CNN is doing. They're making a, a business decision, and they are a business. And, and I, I, while I don't really respect it, I completely understand it. What I don't understand is after all of this, the, the average American who does not understand what they're doing. Yeah. That's that's who the part I marvel at. Like with. Rachel Maddow, who got everything wrong for the last five years. You get the vaccine. That's when you stop the vaccine. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. stops COVID in its tracks. You can't spread it. You can't. I, yes, yes, wrong. And now wrong we find out everyone's got full blown AIDS. I, <laughs> that, that I was, I was, uh, and it's sad. Because I was doing uh, Megan Kelly's show, The Ultimate Woman. Ultimate. I love it. Looks, cooks, brings home, you know, multi million dollars a year. Yeah. I mean, Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah. And everyone goes, hey, you think you could handle a woman making more? I don't know. Let's try it for about 30 years and see, how I, so, <laughs> see if I can adjust. Right. See if I can adjust. Let's do a little experiment. I hook up with a woman who makes 10 times more than me and we'll give it. 30 years. Okay. And we'll just see how I acclimate. It's an experiment. <laughs> Let's yeah. see how I get used to not fucking going to Naples for five fucking I shows agree. and being at LAX at 5.15 in the morning tomorrow. Let's see if I can handle. Let's see if I can handle sleeping in <laughs> yeah, yeah. while they hit the fucking road. Yeah, I'll do some cleaning. I, can, I think I can handle it. Oh, no, it. no, no. I'm going to take some of your... I'm taking some of my bitches' money and I'm hiring. Respect. I'm getting... People to come clean the house. Yeah, you're giving I'll back to the economy. Yeah. I'll coordinate. Yeah, but I'm not picking up a duster. <laughs> yeah. So she was going. Well, there was a story today out of uh, Rolling Stone about Trump. I said, okay, I don't believe it. And 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 she goes, yeah, I don't either. And I was like, yeah, it's sad. I used to subscribe to the Rolling Stone. Maybe the story's true. I have no fucking idea. Rolling Stone, you guys have destroyed your legacy, and your currency by lying so much and you're going to weigh in on some Trump thing that may or may not have not, not listening. Sad, but true. And, and you know when you get it, when you say it's like okay they're trying to uh, they're trying to make a business and they're, it's like it, but I I think that we're in this kind of phase of like an, we're in the uh, anti business business phase where people like aren't can aren't respecting their consumers, their customers, and they're playing up to higher up. And, you know, if you really want to go deep enough, I, I, to me, it goes all the way back to the Federal Reserve, which prints all this money that cleans up the books of all these woke DEI uh, ESG decisions they make. Oh, man, when you start getting into it, like I heard uh, Kennedy spoke last night for about, eh, it was probably a good hour. Um, at his birthday? At his birthday. Mm hmm. Was um, him. Uh, Cheryl Hines was there. Awesome. Uh, great. They're going to come on the show, by the way, together soon. So that'll be that'll be cool. Very warm guy. It's funny. Uh, last time I 
interviewed him, I, I felt he was very serious, you know, and even a, a little bit cold or something. But he was, we were hugging it out and it was great. And, uh, you know, he was just up there talking about BlackRock and all these, you know, big conglomerations, uh, you know, uh, that were buying up all the property. And, and it's like, oh, yeah, you can't. Can't afford a house. People can't own a house. It's crazy. The house, you know, people out here they make forty four thousand a year, and a house is one point seven million dollars. Uh, it, it's not even doable. And then, if there's no home ownership, then there's no stake. You know, there's no buy in. You know what I mean? Like you're not really. It's like, oh, you know, he's talking about. I, I want to get people IDs. Everyone should have an ID. If you don't have an ID, you're not in the society. You know, if you don't have home ownership, then what do you care if everything fucking burns down and everything like that? And you'll never hear anyone talking about any of this stuff. And and he is a fly in the ointment of all anything the word big in front of it. <laughs> he's a fly in their fucking ointment. And the other thing that's crazy, if you really want to get to it, his dad was assassinated, his uncle was assassinated, and and he goes to the White House and goes, can I get a little Secret Service love over here? And they're like, no. <laughs> no. It, He's it a blows Kennedy. my mind. Everyone in his family has been assassinated, and he can't get any yeah. secret. We, we, we're mind. saving the money for Ukraine. Sorry. And it's the first time ever that's happened. Anybody who is like, especially when you look at he's polling at 12% right now. So that's a big number. You want to know what's interesting that he was uh, speaking about last night, which is he goes... And I'll, I'll paraphrase a little bit. He basically goes, listen, I I poll best with people under 35. Like, I'm crushing it with people under 35. And the only people I do higher with are people under 24. He goes, the people I get no poll, my lowest polling demographic, my, de- my demo, my generation, baby boomers. It gets nothing from them. And he goes, because they all watch legacy media. Mm. And they hear... The ladies from the View call him a whack of doodle, anti-vax, you know, whatever, whatever nut job, and you know, MSNBC. Those are the last group that sits and turns on the TV set and watches the evening news where they lie the whole time about him. But everyone else who's 24 gets all their shit from their phone, and they get to see him do long form interviews and be thoughtful and listen to podcasts and and things like that, which is really interesting. So. You, you'd think like normally, like when, you know, when I go and do a comedy show, I look out in the audience and I just see guys my age, white guys, you know, heterosexual guys. The huge, dudes with all the with money. Huge cocks. Yeah. You know, I see yeah. myself yeah, 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 wide, yeah, yeah. super yeah. girthy wide right. hogs. And I, that's what I see yeah. staring back right. at me. But this is weird. He's a 70-year-old guy and he's got the 22-year-olds because they ain't watching Rachel They're not brainwashed. Yeah, right. and I agree with that. And like, if you kind of take a look at like, like why I think like cities like L.A., New York, San Francisco, Chicago, it's going to be so hard to save those cities because you know, especially people our age, they're they're so calcified in their views, and they don't realize that like the political spectrum has completely shifted. So when we were young and we were raging against the machine, we were looking at the right as like big business, maybe oppressive, uh, like the, this view yeah. of Catholicism well, you, and religion. You, you back in the day you had to rage against Richard Nixon yeah. and the Vietnam yeah. War and to this day I go yeah all right to yeah. noble causes right uh, now it's switched you've switched it's from the left is now doing it but they can't come to grips with that you know it's a very interesting um, thought experiment brought it up but it's been a while when I started off in radio in the uh, mid nineties, you know, 94 or so. Um, and every time we got a complaint and we would get complaints, you know, Kevin and Bean love line, you know, there's some group wrote some letters, you know what I mean? It's like, okay, what religious far yeah. right, religious fundamentalist Christian group. I said titties and now they're very upset. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was always religious 
from the right. Yes. Conservative. Yes. That's what you get. Now you get a letter. It's all hard left people. Now 100. everyone trying to shut everyone up. And they have letter writing campaigns to oh. cancel Love Line or whatever it is. And you'd have to go talk to your program director. It was always, oh, click it. These are nutty, religious, right wing, gun toting, <laughs> pickup truck driving, you know. And and now it's all all the cancellation, all the yep. letters, and all the complaints are coming from the left. That's the switch from from ninety from the mid nineties to now. They completely flopped and switch, and now there's nothing from the religious right. Yeah, I they're mean, the ones getting yeah, rounded it's up. It's kind of like the the right kind of goes, okay, these super extreme religious people, they they they're making us lose our base. We we kind of got to get rid of the extremes of those. But the le- the left, their whole thing is about empathy. They act like they're all about empathy. It's all this big show out in front of everybody. So they can't do that. They can't call out the crazies. And a big, you know, for me, man, the cancel culture thing was all astroturfed. It was all done by corporations that give you the illusion that these blue-haired weirdos had all this power. In reality, it was the corporations that would astroturf this moment and then just drop you real quick. So it looked like they had a real power, and now they don't have that anymore. You saw it with uh, Sean Strickland, this Canadian, she's a very attractive girl, was like, hey, TikTok, do your thing, meaning go cancel them. They have no power anymore. I know. <laughs> but these people don't understand it. So you have these guys, and I, I love them. They're friends of mine in comedy, and I love them the pieces, but they used to be like real savages back in the day, and now they're kind of like closing the door behind them, saying things like, if you say mean stuff, or you know, if you don't, if people are, if you don't make people laugh, that's a you're not doing your job. And it's like, dude, you used to try to offend people all the time, and now you're closing the door behind you because you're sucking up to people who are in, in an industry that's dying. Um, changing gears here. Uh-huh. At the event last night, big home, very big, beautiful home in Encino. Uh, it was probably. Just hundred people there uh but i was starving and i you know what i do is i i figure out my eating based on what's coming down the pike you know what i mean you tell me there's going to be a big swanky thing coming down the pike i go not eating today right i'm gonna get some past apps Uh, yep uh show up and they got i got two of my favorite things they got this massive sushi area where the little Japanese ladies making it right in front of your face and stacking them over here. They got a holding pen, pen, pen holding a pen over here. She's making the stuff looking, looking amazing, Love looking it. amazing. And then right next to it, a whole big, big tray of sliders, right? So I go, I'm in, I'm yeah, in, I go, this is, this here. is going to be awesome. So I go over there and I see the sushi and she's taken this beautiful pink salmon and setting it on top of the bed, you know, and everything. And I just go over there, grab my plate, and I'm like, I'm standing there, you know, and and she's in, and I go, oh yeah, this looks amazing. And she, they go, you know, this is uh, this is vegan sushi. I go, mm. oh. <laughs> Oh, First no. off, isn't sushi? Come on, yeah. I Sushi's mean, I, vegan I, there's enough, something fine you know print. I mean? You can eat fish. Yeah, and I'm, I'm like, oh, this is what? What is that? Oh, it's made of kelp and uh, tapioca, <laughs> tapioca and kelp, and then dyed pink. You should be told. No. That. And and I was like, oh, oh, okay. I'm I'm gonna have the other sushi over here, and I, it looks amazing. You know, oh, that that's vegan sushi. That's vegan too. Two, and I'm like. You know what? Fuck it. I'm going to have a slider. Yeah, that's made of mushroom. No. It's a mushroom slider. I'm like, oh, oh, uh, is there like some provolone or something? No, no. It's, we're going, we're going all, it's all vegan. They're going vegan. It's all vegan. It's all, it's all vegan. And then I realized, ah, but here's how vegan works. Uh, I'm like, is, is uh, Cheryl and uh, Bobby, are they, they vegan? No, no, they're not vegan. Oh. I met the woman who owns the house. She she seems pretty non-vegan to me, you know. Kelsey Grammer's here. I don't think he's vegan. Who who's <laughs> vegan? No, nobody's vegan. The person throwing the party is vegan. Oh, and they, like, have I, they have the to worst. do it. They have to do it. They have to the do worst. it. They have to do it. And it's like, oh, everyone's miserable now <laughs> because you, who's not eating, who threw the party, 
is vegan. The fortitude. And and it's like, and, and then you start going, now you have to start f- trying to figure out how the vegan affects stuff. Like, you know, okay, there's some, there's guacamole over there. Can I just eat that with my hand? <laughs> like, is that... Did vegan fuck up? No, vegan won't fuck up guac, no, will it? I don't no, think okay, so. okay, that's okay. All right, uh, how about that? How about that uh, tortilla chip over there? And uh, how about that sink sponge? Can I eat that fucking sink sponge? <laughs> and I was like, now I had fourteen pieces of sushi anyway. Just not happy and about it. And how was it? It's it's like I've talked to someone. I was like, the highest end of the the vegan sushi spectrum, which is where I was. I was in rarefied vegan air is about 65% of sushi. It's sort of like whatever the difference between truck stop sushi and Nobu. Yeah. That's the difference between vegan highest end of vegan and just sushi. Respect. Yeah, so I ate a ton of it anyway. Who's this Japanese lady cutting vegan sushi? Where do you that's find a, her? That's a, the, the, the stuff had stripes. It was striated. It was the perfect they color. It looked like it. They looked like they cut, but they just they just can't get they there. They can't. They have like, to. If you buy, you eat that, that slider, the slider is like... <laughs> you just can't make it. You Did know? you meet her at the end of the night? The lady whose house it was. Did she have pronouns? The lady whose house it was was not vegan. The person who threw oh, the okay. thing, a oh. celebrity. Oh, I'll leave. I'll leave their name alone. But celebrity lady oh. went full vego. Oh. Everyone's miserable. So insulting. Nobody can so, say anything. So insulting. About to just eat it. I. I. I I ended up eating like seven thousand pistachios. That's when you stop eating <laughs> out on the yeah. way back. Literally, yeah. literally, literally, like you're, you're driving home and you're going, "We got to eat." Yeah. I mean, I, I'll fucking ram this car into a cow. <laughs> yeah. We'll eat it. Yeah. We'll yeah. eat it off the bumper. Like game. you, you, you are not satiated, satisfied. I ate thirty-one pieces of sushi. I got out of that place and I was like, "I need some cow." It's uh, so no crazy satiation. To me. Yeah, because, like, if you're throwing a party for someone, don't you want to make sure they have the best time and it's not about you? Not the vegans. Not the, the vegans. The, the vegans, it's about them. Yeah, 100%. And it's about them imposing. Like, like RFK Jr. doesn't drink, you know, but it's his birthday party. Yeah. And when you don't know somebody that well and they're adult, you're like, okay, just give him a bottle of scotch. You know what I mean? Like, he doesn't drink. I would never go, I drink, so I'm showing up the <laughs> bottle of fucking Cuddy Shark, no, and you. me and Bobby are going to get loaded. You understand? Because I drink. You know what I mean? So sad. I was, like, okay. I was like, I don't know what to get him now. I can't, you know, what am I supposed to knit him a shawl or something? <laughs> like, I, I'm sorry. And by the way. It sounds like you should have brought a meat. That's what it sounds like. Have had, have I should have fucking showed up with a fuck <laughs> saddlebag full of jerky. Here's some ribs, dude. Enjoy oh that. God. Enjoy Let's it. Let's get I, out of the way from these communist vegans. Oh, listen. I, if I showed up that place with like a case of Slim Jims, I'd be a rich man <laughs> yeah, right now. Just sure. like, ele- yeah, this Slim Jim's going to cost you $28. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You want it's it like or not. Coat. Market yeah. value. Oh, my God. Yeah, vegan. I, I oh. like Robert. I, you know, I I have a bunch of friends who who know him, and they all say the nicest things about him. Like I ha- again, his view on um, on guns and his view on like you know, no matter what for Israel, th- th- those are problematic for me. But outside of that, everyone says not really. Like they all say he's the nicest guy. Yeah. Oh, he's warm. Cheryl Hines is probably the nicest woman in Hollywood, and uh, he's he's a sweetheart, and she's a sweetheart. Like they're just great, uh, great hanging out. Um, all right, moving on. <laughs> this vegan thing. I, I, I literally. I'm sorry, you had to go. Oh, no, yeah. listen, listen, listen. You yeah. deserve better. I got a dinner tonight at the Smokehouse. Oh yeah, go. It was on the schedule already. I'm fucking gonna go into some prime rib. I'm going like a savage. Oh yeah, dude! Yeah. I, I, I'm going to wild Fugu on that prime chow rib. The other day. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, just no green. green go, all the go, time. go! <laughs> Tell me if you respect this man, you're jealous of this man, or you fear this man, or you have empathy for this man. Okay. I, I went to a Fogo de Chow 
with a crew of like five guys when it opened because we did the morning show and or done. It was like 11 noon or whatever. And we just went right to Fogo Chow. And said, to me, Fogo to Chow, it's not a place a man eats alone. Yeah. There, there's a guy alone, <laughs> alone at opening. Like like noon, Fogo to Chow, Wednesday, wearing a suit, just alone at a Fogo to Chow. Is there sympathy for this guy? One hundred like can't be yeah, friends yeah, together. For sure. Is he more? Is he so evolved I've, I've that he no can sympathy. do this? I only have respect. Respect. Yeah. I felt bad for him, but I also felt like he was empowered. Yo, know, I mean, that's like going to the movies by yourself. It's like I don't care what anybody thinks. I'm just going to do it my 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 way. I'm jealous of people that eat alone. They go like, oh, I go out to eat all the time alone. I go, oh, that seems weird. <laughs> so I go, no. And I realize I'm. I'm tethered to somebody. Mm. Like, yeah, like you have I, to have conversation. If I want to go out to eat, I got to call someone and go, you know, I'll go say to my son, you want to go out to eat? He goes, no, I'm going out with my friends. I go, all right, I'll just sit home. Yeah. I wish I had the freedom to go out and eat alone. I'm lucky when I go out, I always have someone to talk to, which is the voice inside my head. So I'm always with somebody. I can't turn my head off. So I'm just having the best conversations. I think the, I, the, there's got to be some pecking order of eating alone. And I would say, number one, eat alone food is sushi. For some reason, you can do it. You can sit at the bar, sit at the, counter, yeah. sit at the counter. And it's also the size or the shape or the something of it. I think the bottom is Mexican food. I could not eat Mexican food By alone. yourself? No. I'd need, I'd need it. You know, How I'd, about pizza? I could do pizza alone. But you can. You can go get a couple slices. I can do... I, I, yeah, pizza may give sushi a run for their money, but you don't sit at a restaurant so much. How about pizza. Golden Corral? It's like that's got to uh, be that's, that's got to be like if you go Golden Corral by yourself, yeah. that's 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 I a have sad a lot, Let's say I have a lot of empathy for you. <laughs> All right, so Foga to Chow guy, respect, respect. Yeah, okay, but fine. Golden Corral, <laughs> a lot of sympathy, a lot of sympathy for yeah. that guy. That's You're just loading up, sushi, bro. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> You're just loading up by yourself. But you want to get fat with somebody. Like, right. let's get fat together. <laughs> yeah. Not fat by myself, because then you'll never meet anybody. But if you can grow fat with someone you love, yeah. that's, that's yeah. it, dude. Yeah. And, uh, and, and Mexican, the saddest food to eat alone. Yeah. Okay. Now, this is not you getting a burrito at Chipotle. This is a Mexican Listen, restaurant you're getting where you're the chips and the salsa sitting at, the at a booth alone. Did you, you know see the I mean? guy talking about how he... He went and got Chipotle, and he asked for extra meat, and they charged him seven dollars. No, that's where we are. With, in, I don't know gay slang. How does that work? Yeah, I, he asked for extra meat, <laughs> right? He asked for some extra steak or something. And according to his video, allegedly, he, he got charged another seven dollars on his twice burrito. The price. Really? So it was almost a twenty-five dollar burrito. Jeez. I love all the videos of people complaining about the price of everything. That's my favorite one where it's like, I just got charged an extra 50 cents for a tomato slice on this taco. I'm going out to my truck and film myself. <laughs> Eating alone. <laughs> I'm going to rant. Out yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I, on one hand, I, I kind of get it. I mean, I get the outrage. On the other hand, uh, we live in this country. We experience prices. We don't need your input. On the price of, of groceries. Well, it's also, I mean, like, I guess you can say it's Biden's fault, but in reality, again, it goes back to the Federal Reserve just printing money. If I hear another person say, I'm tired of my tax dollars going to this, this, and that. Listen, the truth of the matter is most of your federal uh, tax money doesn't go to almost anything. It goes to one thing, which is paying off the interest on the money that the Federal Reserve is printing. I know. We're so weird in that we label certain subjects like we're we're like we're like you know the month the interest that we have to pay this is going to be a legacy that's left to our children this yep. is the reason you can't afford a home right now this is why the interest rates and then someone goes Hey, what's Taylor Swift up to? And then we go, oh, yeah, fuck it. Let's talk about her for a while. I, I, I and, and then we're done. More. We're all done. We're all done. I think there's a giant demoralization campaign to, you know, this. listen, the whole thing is like, oh, we're getting dumber. I go, I don't know if we're getting dumber. I mean, like, if you took your grandpa or whatever generation you think was the smartest and brought them to today and asked them to uh, upload a, a picture to Instagram, how long do you think that would take? It's a, it's a different skill set. Yeah. There, but they are drowning 
leading us in useless knowledge. And they want us to have so much useless knowledge that we can't actually understand how our or want to pay attention to how our government works. That's it. And what they don't want to understand or they don't want us looking into is that our Federal Reserve is basically funding the entire military industrial complex and they're allowing this 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 cultural marxism to infect this country by cleaning up the books of all these countries pushing all these com- companies pushing it on us that's the whole what they're doing right now all right but we we need to argue about race okay let's well, i'm well, in all this I'm all is, about uh, that's the I whole plan like, started Swift. on that the, i'm so upset and, and they're just like they're like listen you guys don't start looking into Monsanto or BlackRock or any military industrial. You know, I'm coming off of the uh, the RFK Jr. speech, but like, don't look into any of this. You just go over here and you argue about race and Taylor Swift, and then we can just keep doing what we're doing. <laughs> Agreed. Over here, it's, it's like fucking jingling keys. Like you're going <laughs> now. What? Where? 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 Where, where did? Well, first off, where did COVID come from? Why is it in a lab over there? Who funded the lab? Who's doing the gain of function? Oh, so they were doing it here, and then Fauci said uh, he had to move it because Obama said we're not going to— Oh, keys, over here. Jim, no. what, what's going Squirrel. on? Race. There's a race thing. There's something about yep. racism, and Taylor Swift may be racist, too. Oh, she dating a black guy? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I mean, whatever we're talking about. Forget about it. guy yeah, wants to be black, am I yeah, right? Forget, I mean, yeah, he's got that now. wigger haircut for sure. <laughs> but it's it's very interesting because even if you uh, you look at like California and why, again, I have zero hope for us to be able to turn it until turn it around until it gets really bad. It's like the theory of racism is actually worse than actual on the ground crime and all that so the the notion of like maybe going hey man maybe i need to vote for the other side this time and even that's a, a questionable but maybe i need to not vote for the same people you want more racism yeah that's it um all right switching gears again i was watching uh, tmz and uh a couple on a couple of those news entertainment shows uh share is in a court battle. She's trying to get executive ship of her son. Of her son. Yeah. Blue Ivy or whatever. Uh, I mean, son. like I maybe, know, maybe something. not name your kid Blue Ivy. Uh, <laughs> Elijah <laughs> Blue Almond. Elijah Blue. Yeah. Almond? His almond brother. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. Right. Gotcha. And he, uh, I guess he's just living off royalties, you know, like you and me, our dad. Yeah. My dad out there swinging that fucking <laughs> axe, <laughs> rocking that crowd. Now I just hang back and get that mailbox money you know but she thinks he has a problem with drugs or whatever and yeah. she's trying him to court he's going to court <laughs> he's fighting her and i was thinking he's like 47 yeah i was thinking like Cher's pretty preachy but she probably has a lot of ideas about how we should raise our kids but uh i don't i don't know how hers turned out and then i was thinking <laughs> Oh yeah, I forgot about our other kid, yeah. Chaz. Yeah, Chaz. He looks Bona. like Larry the Cable Guy now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was like the doctor's like I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut your dick off, and she said get her done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, first off, okay, you, I'm old enough to remember, and Sam, I don't know you. You're probably too young. I'm 51. You you just missed the cutoff. Okay, well, thank God for Sonny and Cher. I know I used show. to know Sonny and Cher because Cher is Armenian. She denied it forever, oh, so I'm really? Armenian. So like that was a big mm. deal. She's Armenian. Oh, okay. Does she deny the genocide as well, or just uh, the Armenian part? <laughs> it's a conflict. I'm gonna Come fight on. sink. Go on. <laughs> I I would just want to tell you with all respect to the Armenians. Thank you. Thank um, you. And I've told this to Mark Garagos as well. So I want to be up front with you. Okay. I do have a friend, a very yeah. good friend. Yeah. And he plays in an over 40 soccer league. And <clears throat> they played an all Armenian team. And the all Armenian team was either trying to fist fight them or fist fight each other. Those are my people. And he said to me, after playing the all Armenian team, I don't condone the genocide, but I understand it. Oh, God. All right. Oh, and Lord. I, oh, Lord. Oh. I told the same to Garagos. Oh, I'll be up front with you. By the way, love Garagos. He got me out. I got busted buying drugs off a hooker, and he got me out of it. Thank you, really? Garagos. Oh, that's the Armo connection. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Oh, dude, I do this connection. giant event, and every once in a while, a legal thing comes up, and the whole board is uh, is uh, lawyers. So, hey, I need a little help. They're like, okay, gotcha. <laughs> 
They stick together, man. Dude, we have to, dude. We're like nine nine cent Jews. That's who Armenians are. <laughs> yeah. We want the, all the respect to Jews, but nobody gives it's it like to us. It's like Jews without all the good stuff. Yeah, you know? right. One hundred percent. It's all the baggage of the Jew that. minus the good part. I love it, you know? dude. Yeah, yeah. But much respect. Much respect. Dude, they're good people. <laughs> I listen, I love I love Garagos. All right, so um we have Chaz. All right, I need Chaz circa uh, end of Sunny and Cher. That's yeah, yeah. There, there, yeah. there yeah. it is. I mean, even there's even better pictures. Do you of the think facing, like? And I'm not trying to be like mean, cherubic blonde little. So the thing about Chaz Bono is when Chaz was Chastity Bono and showing up at the end of. Sonny and Cher, yeah. Yeah. at the age of, of four and a half, you go, well, she's going to end up being like a weather person or a spokesmodel yeah. or something like that. You had no idea you'd be lumberjack. Yeah. <laughs> like, crazy. Full beard. Full everything. Yeah. Right. Uh, not, I mean, a, a pioneer in the movement. Right, I mean the, yeah. the Harriet the full Tubman, yeah, yeah, the yeah, hormones, yeah, 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 the yeah, Harriet the Rosa Parks Tubman, of, uh, or uh, now Harry trans. Tubman, the, of, Harry. the Harry Tubman yeah. of the trans movement, just out acting. Yeah, I don't know how. By the way, bigger arms than mine, more Shredded. man than I'll Shredded. ever be. Shredded. Probably has yeah. a bigger dick, you know. Yeah, I, what snacks his chick around? A does times. does not have any of the trappings of formerly being a blonde little girl. Yeah. And by the way, where'd that blonde hair come from? Anybody ask that question? (laughs) I mean, uh, by the way, could it be that... Greg Ullman had pretty blonde hair. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's true. That's Mm -hmm. true. Oh, yeah. That wasn't Sonny's Kid. My apologies. But my question is, Cher is gorgeous. It's Sonny's Kid. No, hold on. Chaz Bono is Sonny's Kid? Yeah. Yeah. It's supposed to be. That's supposed to be. Well, I thought so you, you were should floating be, a you theory. You should be questioning well, the no, blonde hair. Well, no, I am. Throw, I like, know. where does the blonde hair come from? Ain't Armenian. That Ain't much Armenian, <laughs> Maybe that's God mad at that that gorgeous woman had ki- had kids with, let's say, not the best looking guy in the world, right? Sonny? Yeah. Sonny's diminutive, but he's cute, you know. Sonny's great. I, I hate I hate Sonny Bono. I I hate Sonny Bono. He, well, what did he do? What didn't he do? That's true. All right, end of subject. End of subject. <laughs> no, yeah, no, that's it. No, I'll take. No, we'll take a we'll take a break. But it's getting the problem. I, I'm going to tell you why I hate Sonny Bono, and and then and maybe Sam, you can break me down sort of psychodynamically and and r- try to figure out why I have such rage for certain uh, groups I'm, of people. I'm in. All right, we'll take a quick break. Be right back after this. You're about to hear a preview of The Jordan Harbinger Show with Bill Browder, who uncovered a massive fraud inside the Russian government and took on one of the most powerful men in the world, Vladimir Putin. Well, I was sitting there down 90%. They were going to steal my last 10 cents on the dollar. So I took a decision which nobody had ever taken before, which was to take on one of the oligarchs. I did. I fought back big time. Sergei and I exposed the crime. The same people who Sergei testified against arrested him, and then tortured him to try to get him to withdraw his testimony. He was really a man of steel. On the morning of November 17th at 7.45 a.m., I got the call from Sergei's lawyer, and it was the most horrifying, life-changing, soul-destroying news that I could have ever gotten. For more on how Bill Browder continues to fight for change while being a thorn in the side of Vladimir Putin, check out episode three, which is one of the most popular episodes of The Jordan Harbinger Show. There's nothing more embarrassing than being at Home Depot and not be able to build anything at all. <laughs> and you're just walking around going, hey, what is, you're literally showing pictures of things and asking, what is this? Is this, <laughs> right? And you just walk around, you're like, what is this? There's nothing more cucking than sitting there asking someone at Home Depot what this tool is. You ever done that? <laughs> Trust me, I'm a man. I have children. What? What is this? What is it used for? The woman who gave birth to my children want me to find man stuff, and I don't know what to do. I have no skills, except for maybe well-crafted dick jokes. That's about all I'm good at. Sam Tripoli is on The Adam Carolla Show. Sam's got a new show on Rumble, um, Doom Scrolling. So check that out. So, okay. Now, I realize... 
I have a very visceral reaction to anyone who tries to reinvent themselves or get me to think of them in a, in a certain way via piercings, tattoos, attitudes, or, or what have you. It just, I hate them. I respect. And, and I don't know why I have the rea- this a real strong reaction to it, something in my horrible childhood, I'm sure, <laughs> but nobody else seems to care. You know what I mean? Like, I went to school with this Jewish kid who was a nerd and a half. He was like a nerd, the nerdiest guy ever. Literally wore a Reds batting helmet like they get at the ballpark, oh, you know? Really? Like a, it was hard like, helmet? Wrote for the school newspaper, wrote sports and the school. It's it just a nerd, just a nerd. <laughs> and and, I, and, and I, you know, years later, years, you know, 10 years later, 15 years later, I'm like, what happened to that guy? You know, and it's like, oh, he... He's hanging with uh, Guns N' Roses. He's like managing these big bands and hanging with Guns N' Roses. I'm like, mm. that guy looks like such a nerd. And how about Guns N' Roses hang with the nerdy guy? And I was like backstage at, a, at some event um, years and years later, some K-Rock event or whatever. And it's like, oh, that's him. Jet black hair, barefoot, cane with like a skull on top of it, leather, you know, tons of silver bracelets, and earring and stuff. And I was like, well, that's the, that's the nerd. And when I talked to him, he pretended like he didn't know who I was. Oh. But I was the captain of the football team when I was a senior and he was in the 11th grade. I was class clown when he was in the 11th grade and I was a senior. And he wrote an article about me in the sports page of the newsberry he knew who i he was he yeah. just didn't want yeah. me he knew i knew who he was he, knows, he didn't want you to bring right. up the past and when axel to find out he was a fucking right. nerd right right, right. At, i hate it it <laughs> drives me nuts sonny bono you see those pictures of him first off there's always like a fuzzy math like well he was 31 and she was 14 but they kept it pretty cool for the first few years yeah, of the relationship. nobody believes you know, that by the way I, I know elvis said uh, no 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 <laughs> well, he's uh, not hands off hands they just off. got a doomsday yeah. clock till the time she's yeah. ready yeah that's what i want to do i want to hands off i want to hang out and pick the brain of a 14 year old we're just gonna talk you're like so right. that's always a good it's worse, like whenever I would watch Catch a Contractor and the long haul truckers just sitting there and, and he's like, uh, you know, I didn't, I, you know, Chris Hansen busted. Was like, I, I wasn't going to touch that 13 year old. Like, oh, what were you going to do? But then we go out and shoot some pool and hang out. I was like, okay, you're a sicker man than yeah. I thought. <laughs> yeah, that's a, yeah, that's cra- Yeah, 100%. So he is Mr. Fucking Hippie Beatnik. Like you can see pictures of him. Full beatnik hippie from the six. He's got a fur vest on. First off, he made a movie with her. You can always tell. People go, oh, they wrote, and they directed, and they starred in a movie. If it's a piece of shit, it's basically like you going, I'm a great chef. I just went to a kitchen, had every ingredient I wanted for a casserole, and made a shit loaf. <laughs> and then you go, oh, I guess you're a shit cook, right? And you go, no, no. I'm an artist. You, right. you know what I mean? It's like, it's no, purposeful. you. if you write, star in, direct, and whatever, a film, and it's fucking horrible. Yeah, you're garbage. Then you're not, you're garbage. All right, so he's, you know, the song sucks. Everything sucks. <laughs> he's full beatnik, right? Because he's hammering checks. Then at some point, you see him at the end of life. And he's a conservative Republican from Palm Springs. And all of a sudden, the hair is short. And he's got an American flag on the lapel. And it's like, oh, this guy just does whatever he needs to do to hammer checks and convince people he's that person. At what age was he at that point? At the end? Yeah. Um, I think he got into his 50s, probably, when he was doing the, you know, he... now. 62, but that's his. He died at 62, right? Like I. Well, when was he, he running for Republican? How he, old was he? He was. Um, I mean, he's he yeah, he, in his 50s. He's so. born in 35. He entered office in 88. So yeah, 53. So for me, man, right. it's just like I think. Okay, so in my own life, I like, dude, crippling drug addict, crippling sex addict. Now, like, spiritual guy. You know, I. You know, I used to watch all these these guys and like. I used to watch these pro athletes like Deion Sanders, like just stacking chicks and, you know, just hitting everything that could move. And then at some point he goes, 
You know, I got Jesus in my heart. And I go, are, are you doing that because the, the limelight's done? Or And then I realized at my own thing that s- at some point that, like, you realize all that stuff is stupid. And it's a giant waste of time. And it's just like this youthful thing where you're like, you think you're raging against the machine. And really, you're just participating in material, low vibrational actions. So my only pushback to that is like, I think do, some people do grow. And like, that's a big problem. I, like I have two daughters right now. They're three, thank God. They're about to turn four. And I like as soon as I start realizing the internet, I'm going to go, anything you say on the internet will be held against you in a social court of law. Yeah. So if you're out there doing these stupid ass man of streets where like good looking black guys are interviewing you drunk and you start giving away all your secrets Secrets, just know when you meet a nice guy, all of his boys are going to find that video and send that to everybody. So you have to understand that that is on your record. But I do believe some people do. I find, find out it, you talk to a black guy. And yeah, they're like, out. dude, you're talking to black men? <laughs> Unbelievable. No, yeah, listen. Like, I, if the guy from the Guns N' Roses uh, yeah. they, with the cane, if he records, if he went, oh, Adam, how are you doing? Look at my life. Now, isn't this amazing? That, I would respect that, but not answer that. Because, right. listen, I love female comics. I have a lot of female friends. But by far, the number one group that acts like they didn't know you when they blow up are female comics. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, number one, because they never want to acknowledge that they were like they were at an open micer level. It's just this oh. weird. And there's a lot. Or of maybe great... gave you a handy in a stall. One, oh, yeah. Well, don't even get into that because <laughs> oh, that becomes a me too really movement. Yeah, gotta, You're like you love giving hand jobs. Stop <laughs> acting like you were a victim. Mm-hmm. They love it. They love it. They <laughs> love it. It's like unbelievable. Not, yeah. And with these videos, too, it's like these girls are admitting to like all these like sexual atrocities, dude. And, and But yet yeah, men have to act like they're, un, you know, they're just like some androgynous, sexless robot. Yeah. I know. They get cheered for fucking a guy the first night, and then we got to pretend like we don't beat up. They just give away secrets. Like, a woman bragging about her body count to me is the same as a guy bragging about how like how in debt he is, okay? <laughs> Nobody wants to hear it unless it's an, a, like, uh, an incredible story of, like, Mike Tyson. Like, I lost $400 million. Well, you deserve an off-Broadway oh, play for well, that. fucking like Mike Tyson yeah. would be cool, too. Yeah, that's right. a two-way yeah, street. Yeah, that's the only guy you want to hear. Well, just to get back, <laughs> I am all for evolving. Yes. But evolving doesn't mean you buy a bunch of silver skull rings and <laughs> fucking try yeah. to act like yeah. you're yeah. a ghoul. You know what I mean? <laughs> cool. Th- that's that that ain't evolving. If uh, you you evolved. Right. I got These you. These other guys are fucking He's posers. playing a character almost. Yeah, Sonny Sonny's like I'm a talentless hack. Yeah. I, I cannot sing. I cannot write songs. I have no comedy chops, but yet I have an unyielding desire to be in this business. So how can I invent some sort of version of me that could then suck up to someone who has talent and then just sort of ride ride their atmosphere? Mm-hmm. I'll just bump draft them yeah. into, into a payday. And then later on, when that whole scene dried up, you're like... Well, now I could go to Palm Springs and be a conservative guy. So I got to get my hair cut, put on a fucking blue suit and a, and a red tie, out, yeah. and I'll grow my mustache out, and I'll just go over there and hammer some more checks. Well, maybe he moved to Palm Springs. He's like, these gays are out of control. You yeah. know, it's like, I'm going to go Republican now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had, that is. And he was probably there before. I mean, like, it was God, out of control. like, there was a time where you could look like that and make it in Hollywood. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah, beat Nick. Yeah, I mean, just that face. God bless him. God bless him. He figured out the Matrix. <laughs> all right. God, what was that movie they made? It's horrible. Um, all right, so I went through this. I went through that. I, I, I have figured out. I was driving here today, and I figured out the best city slash, like, government job. You know what I mean? Like, like you know, you kind of go... Would you want to work for the post office? And you go, eh, I don't know. I don't think I'd like that. You know, how about be a meter maid or something? You go, hmm. Cop, like a New York cop, patrol the subway. No. Like, I, no, I don't fucking, no, not doing that. And, but then you kind of think of like certain jobs where you go, eh, I found the best. I'm, I'm driving on the freeway here today. It's, it was raining last night. And 
LA is such a piece of shit. If, yeah. it, if it rains for 20 minutes, we, like we have an emergency. Kids don't have to go to school. We start seeing news reports about how this will affect your pets and stuff like that. <laughs> it's fucking rain. Yeah. It's just rain. Yeah. I mean, it rained the other. I was in. Uh, I was in New York. I didn't even know the fuck I was, and I started hearing about rain in New York uh, in LA. Oh, I was in Pebble Beach doing a car race or something. I started hearing about rain in LA and it was so horrific. The reports that I was on the phone with workers going, you got to go to my home. You got to see if it's still there, you know, and whatever. It was fucking nothing. I just drove back and then they canceled school the next day. It was fucking drizzling when I drove back from the Bay area. It was, it wasn't a thing, but they go nuts, you know? So I'm driving down the freeway and there's rain last night and there's a seat. I see rollers, sirens behind me and there's fire trucks and everyone's heading down the freeway. You don't see them on the freeway too often. Then all of a sudden I, I get off the freeway and I see this fire rig, not like a fire truck, but like the rig they'll have sometimes with paramedics or equipment or whatever. What's it towing? It's towing two black jet skis Ooh. and a Zodiac raft. And I'm like, that's a cool government job. <laughs> that is a cool government job. This guy's job. job is to deploy those jet skis in the river. And like somebody fell, some dog fell in the river or something, and you get to fucking hop with yeah. your rooster yeah. tail, yeah. Coast Guard. Yeah. fire it up. Nice. Doesn't matter how much gas costs. <laughs> Doesn't matter about two stroke oil. Yeah. You didn't have to go down the Kawasaki dealership. Yeah. Nothing came out of your pocket. Your job yeah. is to ride a jet ski. And. <laughs> Uh, the, the lead up to the jet ski is I hit the sirens, get the fuck out of my way. Yes. I got to jump on a jet ski. You're like some weird kind of like L.A. special forces, yeah. right? Yeah. You only get called out when it's it's drizzling or the worst no, of the worst. All, all hero, by yeah. the way, no yeah. baggage. Like, are you racist shooting black people? Yeah. Uh, whatever the baggage yeah. that comes like, but no baggage. All jet ski. See, do soldiers, bro. Yes. You Bad never ass. Yeah, you never have to go into the shit parts of yeah, town. Like, yeah. no one ever goes, oh, I got to go down to South Central with my jet ski. Yeah. I got to yeah. go down to Inglewood with my jet No, no. You're working Malibu. Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. It always looks cool because you're in the rain. Oh, man. Yeah. What a gig. You're on the, and a black sea, a black, black like, sea, dude. Yeah, dude. We, you, by the way, I'm probably fun. cost $77,000 yeah. <laughs> because the government bought it for you. Yeah, Unlimited it's probably gas. bulletproof. It's yeah. got Wi Fi. Probably got an espresso machine somewhere on it. Probably. Yeah, yeah. You're you know set, it bro. Does. Yeah, you're it's set. all black. You're stealthy. Yeah, yeah. Thank uh, you, Federal Reserve. You're, yeah, you're in the jet ski patrol. Yeah, the jets. Ski Patrol gets all the ass. Dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all the ass. Yeah, you know who gets no pussy? The cop bicycle patrol. Oh, no. the You're worst. You're on your fucking huffy in your shorts. Can I tell you a funny story? Real, It was a quick one. It was just outside of the Scientology uh, Celebrity Center. That's I'm where sure. all the butt stuff happens, right? And uh, so it's on Fountain. I, it's it's fr Fountain. So I go grab dog food. I get out. I reverse my car back out. Suddenly these cop cars come and they pull up and I go, I'm like every white guy in a, a black comics joke about how we have to look for danger all the time. Right. Why people be going to danger, right? right so right. I drive up, I look and there is a black guy walking down with, with a tire iron. And an avalanche of cops. I've never seen so many cops in my life. It was like a parade. Was there a jet ski cop there? There was not. But I, I'm like, oh my, I'm like, I'm trying to get my dog dog food. I'm like, if they shoot this guy, I'm never going to get home to feed my dog. So I'm like, I got to go save this guy. So I drive, <laughs> this is, I drive up, man, and I get behind the guy. I'm like, hey, dude, dude, get down. It's not worth it. Suddenly these bike cops come up and they're like, hey, get out of here. I'm like, get out of here with your huffy bike. Did they bikes. ring and their guy, bell? Yeah, <laughs> cling, 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 cling. Get out of there, bro. Then I look up and the guns were pointed at me. I'm like, you do not want to get shot by the cops. You definitely don't want to be a white guy shot by the cops because nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody it's like cares. stupid Trumper. Yeah. Probably stormed the Capitol on January no, 6th. No, they wouldn't even know, yeah. by the way. It's not like, you know, uh, your friend Mark Aragos handled the case of the worst cop shooting of all time, times 10, the worst pure execution in, in uh, Arizona. And, uh, Never, never make CNN, never news, never anything. I mean, it, it, it is that is an insane thing that that CNN and legacy media does, which is black guy killed yeah. by white cop. Uh, all they do is report 24 seven, leave out any any details we need to know. 
that could show that maybe the cops were justified and then watch all the cities burn. And then if a white guy gets shot by cops, zero coverage. Then you hear people complain about that. When a black child goes missing, nobody cares. When a white girl goes missing, everybody loses their mind because it's all how can you mentally manipulate women, and particularly right. white women. Yes, yes. Um, there was. And so as I was driving you know, past the guy with the fireman's rig and the two black jet skis, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm a producer, you know, and I started thinking this. It's got a TV show. Yeah. I mean, you you gave it the title. I think it, it was called uh, Ski Cops or something. Sea Do Soldiers. Sea Do Soldiers. Soldiers. Watch the shit out of that. Yeah. yeah. Sponsorship coming yeah, in. Yeah. You know. L.A. Special Forces. That's right. Let's roll. No. Let's glide. That's, <laughs> glide. that's 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 what they tell. Like let's glide. You know. And then some of like the captain would come in and go like, Hey, I noticed last time you deployed, you didn't wear your helmet. Yeah. Because there was a girl drowning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I yeah. don't think she'd wait. For me to put my helmet yeah. on. Okay, Cappy. I'm not worried about me. I'm worried about them. That's right. Right. Saving dogs. <laughs> yeah. There'd be there'd be like a controversial subject, like homeless guy fell in the LA River. Yeah. Found out he has AIDS. Uh-huh. You go, listen, I don't care what he's got. I, 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 I swore. All I took life's important. All life's important. Like, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> I watch the shit out of that show. I would too. too. Let's go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I and mean, we, we, we got our differences. You know what I mean? Like I, cool. I'm eating there, eating a chili dog. Yeah, you, go, yeah. you know what that's doing to you? And I'm like, you got the fat sea do guy that his sea do never starts. He's always having problems. Oh, comic one, relief. Yeah. Uh, there's one comic. You're right because Chips had a chubby cop named Grossman. Yeah, and he was always the comic. Relief, By the way, you know? his name is Gross. Man, right, right. He was the doofus. Yeah, they, yeah, they would do what they do. Do that even, even um, Vegas. Uh, Bob Urich, who was Vegas, Dan Tana. It wasn't enough that you have the stud guy. You had to put a bumbling Jew next to them to really make them like, like it's like a hot chick would go, I need a fat chick to stand next to yeah, me. So I, you you know, thought yeah. I was hot alone. Yeah. What do you see this cow next to me? Yeah. And that's what they would do. They'd take the, the dumpy guy. And they, Bart Braverman was Binzer on, they take Jewish nebbish guys and have you stand next to that six foot tall chiseled dude over right. there and make him look even taller. So we get an Armenian guy for this show. We oh, get an damn. Armenian. Yeah. Damn, I'm in the room. Uh, that reminds <laughs> me is when I one time I was in Tampa Bay and I, I just was like bored, so I went to a strip club and it was a daytime one, and like out came the most gorgeous stripper, and the rest were all just like. Yes, Quasimodo's dog. Right. And I get, oh, man, she does that because she knows she, she can dominate. Right, Everyone right. next to her <laughs> yeah. is not good. And she's like, I am the queen of the day. That's who I am. Chicks surround themselves with ugly chicks a lot. Yeah, uh, they're either super hot. They, yeah. they, they just need one to hold the purses. That's the job of the thick and the fat is the whole and the ugly is to hold the purse. And sometimes the hair. Yeah. If they've well, been overserved. Yeah, yeah. All right. So. I'm thinking about this show. I'm pretty serious about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I start thinking, there was a, do you know there was a bike cop series? No, I didn't know that. I'm pretty sure Mario Lopez starred in it. By the way, that's exactly who I would guess would start. Who do you want to start? Oh, Mario Lopez. Mario Lopez. Yeah, probably... Circa, you know, 1996 or something. Pacific Blue. Pacific Blue. Oh, perfect. And, day. and like the beginning was like them popping wheelies in slow motion and, you know, jumping off their bikes and tackling somebody or something. What is more funny, bike cop show in LA or, uh, Brothers in Outer Space. You remember that one where they yeah. said, here's our idea. We put black people in outer space. And what do they do? They just, they're black. Yeah. <laughs> and they're in outer space. Yeah, I mean, high chinks oh, and stuff. Oh, it was Homeboys yeah. in Outer Space. That's what it was the called. The show writes itself. <laughs> we, we need to find the opening of Pacific Blue because I'm going to use it as a sort of template. You got to. For our show. Perfect. <laughs> you know? And Perfect. again, well, you got to bring this to the pitch room, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna. I'll bring it. I'll go. It's it's a feel alike. It's not a sound alike. I'm not gonna rip them off shot for shot. But if Mario Lopez was on a Sea-Doo and not a ten speed, this is kind of you know picture 
that on this. Yeah. You know, take these guys off bikes, put them on jet skis. That's kind of what we're talking about here. All right, here's the opening. What year is this thing? So it, it was in, uh, it started in 96. And oh, it, did I say 96? Yeah. Well, then make me right. Uh, yeah. Well, ding, praise ding, me. Ding. Praise <laughs> me. Ding, ding, ding. That was ding. amazing. Thank you. you, you really Dude, you were so accurate. Uh, 96 to 2000, total of 101 episodes. So what? That's a, that's a hell of a run. That's a great run. This is part of my pitch. Pacific Blue. How many episodes? Uh, uh, I, I, what was it like? A uh, hundred, one, hundred and one, maybe. A hundred and one. That's one. enough for syndication. That's enough for syndication. Often described as Baywatch on bikes. Oh, dude! That, and you know you when know they came gonna, up with that, I'm they gonna, all high five each <laughs> other. You know what I'm gonna call? It's slow high five. You know what I'm gonna call senior soldiers? Yeah. Baywatch. On Baywatch, bitch. Yeah. It's a double patty Baywatch. Dude, you can't get enough It's more Baywatch, Baywatch yeah. than Baywatch. You understand? <laughs> I'm not doing this on that. It's just Baywatch on Baywatch. Baywatch yeah. on Baywatch. All right. Let's see the... Op- oh, we don't have the internet. Oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. Oh, look at this. Oh, yeah. Pacific Blue. <laughs> oh. Wrong voice. <laughs> no, no. You got that... This is This is weird internet version if they're speaking spanish or something it, well he spoke english but with a heavy heavy uh, I, I, I know but you should know but oh and you'll so know you should know mario so. lopez is only on the last two seasons so this might not even have i think they bring him in to get it going because numbers are starting to, we need a pop yeah. we, need a new, <laughs> no, we, we need a new biker yeah oh they'll be look they'll be guest stars you know oh, up, yeah. the, up the wazoo oh, of course We'll have all the big names just drop in. You know, I I think I know Larry David. I'm pretty sure we could get him to do a roll up. Yeah, for uh, sure. Glide on for you know, sure. We'll call it, you know, we'll get, roller we'll blade get, in. We'll get uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll get we'll get these guys going. All right, now we got to find the beginning. But the internet is just festooned with weird stuff that's been modified. Like that's probably the wrong song, oh. and I heard a second of a weird accent, and I'm like, that's. That's not it. Yeah. So there is a version of it. But, Byron, be more discerning. If you hear weird accents, it's probably not. It would be weird. Although, I don't know. The 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 uh, the physical part, the shots are yeah. are the same. It's and just the, somebody like, in Pacific Blue, they had a lot of guest stars, of course. Oh, yeah? Carmen Electra mm. made a special guest appearance as her character from Baywatch. That's what That's I'm what saying. You need. It's Baywatch oh. on Baywatch. Yes, cross promotion, dude. You yeah. scratch my back, I scratch your back. Yeah. It's always fun when characters from the other, another yes. show come with them. Yeah. Yes. How about this pitch? Reacher on bikes. How about that one? Sea Deuce. Have you seen Reacher? Yeah, Have you seen right. that show? I'd say Reacher on on Sea Deuce. Yeah, yeah, Reacher right. on Sea Deuce. I mean, dude, you watch that guy. I don't care how straight you are, you get gay for Reacher, dude. That guy oh, yeah. is so yeah. straight. You're like, look at that body, bro. Yeah. He's so straight. <laughs> and the nicest guy in the world has really? been in here. Uh, yeah. Oh, he has? I do yeah. think he should be nice. He's like an Adonis, dude. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I watch him like, I wish I was built like that. <laughs> yeah. We all do. Yeah. yeah, we do, dude. <laughs> Genetic superstar. All right. Do we have that opening? Or can we find that opening, I guess, is the, is the question. If not, I'll watch the one. The but let me ask you something. Hasn't demanded this. Do yeah. you think the people from Pacific Blue go to these conventions and sign stuff? I mean, that's oh, a, yeah. that's enough episodes mm-hmm. to, to be like, hey, dude, you know me from season four. It made an impression on this podcaster. For sure. sure it did. For sure. For sure. I watched the shit out of that <laughs> show. All right. Well, we'll just, if we can't find the actual one will just and it's so funny because you watch that and you go oh i remember when there were only white people on tv now yeah. it's like now there'd be like oh, we oh that we have to have we got to do di gotta we got to have that yeah. we got to have a black trans who yeah. can do a see do yeah we'll make her we'll we'll have her be the sassy dispatcher oh sassy not, dispatcher mm. asian lesbian we gotta work her in uh, yeah because they check all the boxes yeah we'll 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 be diverse for uh, that sure, goes bro. that goes for without sure, saying for sure we have to have a diverse sea do secret service bro all right i'll watch the one that may be the wrong one just just so we can see the shots the songs so that Can't be the song. Gl- yeah. the, we'll call this the glory days of television. The all or nothing days. Mm-hmm. I wonder what channel it was on. 
Oh, USA. Yeah, that makes sense. It was on USA. Oh, that's a total USA yeah, show. Yeah, it was a USA show. Is that still going, USA? I think so, yeah. I feel like they just all just flip <laughs> their names. They become something else. But, yeah. Oh, and it's huge in other countries. Oh, it's still oh, going? Oh, international. Huge. Are oh. you kidding still, me? Still, it's syndicated in other countries. They oh, love snaps. it. Yeah, China's going to eat this shit up. China Dude. loves it. Austria, Belgium. Dude, I think like CSI Austria, Miami was like the number one show in the world. And it was just, they had a Latina on there that could not act her way out of a paper <laughs> bag. But she was so hot, nobody cared. It's kind of like, what's her face with Barbie? Like, the fact that anyone's really upset that the, the chick who played Barbie didn't get an Oscar nomination. Yes. It does not understand acting. I, I agree. <laughs> All right. We don't have the old one either. The internet. Oh, it's the internet. Oh, here we go. Let's watch the old one. I, my my option Russian is the old one if we don't have, we can't find the real one. Oh, here, this is the whole episode, the pilot. <laughs> oh, the pilot. So it'll oh, have here the it intro. All right. Oh, this is the pilot? Oh. Cold open. Oh, mm. guitar. Soon as I... Electric white gangbangers. Oh, yeah, this is how white it was. They had white taggers. That's <laughs> yeah. how white Hollywood was. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ooh. Oh, hot uh -huh. chicks jogging. Gears shifting. Yeah. This is the Venice Boardwalk. That guy's right. still there, by the way. But there is an opening to this show, right? Muscle Beach. This is the pilot. We're, we're, we're but did you scroll scrolling. forward a little? Yeah, it didn't really find an it opening. It didn't have an opening. Oh. I found the exact same thing as before. Yeah, but just instead of bike shots in this montage. Yeah. Power in the scene. Me on the, the scene. By the there. way, mm -hmm. by the way, the girl who just turned around the glass on and smiled called her family and said she booked the pilot. Yes, <laughs> yes that's true. All right, well, I will look at the old... There, how can you have a pilot with no opening? And how Some long of the pilots is this don't have opening? openings. Like the se the second episode will have. Oh, uh, all right. Opening. Well, I'll, I will. Uh, I don't. We're not going to watch oh, the whole episode. Oh. Cell phones in his hand, and he says to me, "Hey, what's the deal, man? They don't trust you with the police guards, or what?" All I right. told him, "Oh, I only have my learner's permit, but I'm working my way up to motorcycle right. patrol." Good-looking people yeah. wearing next to nothing. Yeah. On. On patrol yeah. on a sea do, yeah. mm -hmm. and and I'm telling you, let's glide is going to be on every t-shirt and lunch. Glide every t-shirt, every ball cap in America <laughs> in. and abroad. I you, want you, you listeners better not steal our hot idea, no. okay? We're we're copywriting you know it as we speak. Here's my thing: try, try. You can't pull it off. <laughs> you don't have the magic. You don't have the power that you we don't have. have. A writer's table like this. <laughs> That's right. It's literally a writing table. All right, I will watch uh, the opening as uh, we yeah, we found song. before. How come we were, the internet's getting slower? Everything else is getting faster. Awesome. The internet is getting, getting some more conspiracies. Let's see. Uh, yeah. oh, don't even I'm get scrolling into that. through episode three, by the way, too, and it looks like it's it's different music. But no, I'm not seeing an opening. It says no. the song is called Just Another Day in L.A. All right. Oh, here it is. Oh, guys, doing killer things. I totally wow. catching air. Oh, good old Dave Lander. Mm. Oh, and what's his name? Beach Volleyball. Rick Rasevich. This is the yes, essence of it. Yeah. I'm going to need oh, this. Oh, that was advanced graphics, by the right. way. Ahead of the time. I'm going to be in our pitch session. This is what I'm showing, all right? Yeah. That was fire, bro. Yeah. That was fire. Except that for Jet Skis. By the way, that wasn't that the guy from Laverne and Shirley? Which, yes. The guy with the, with the weirdo? The yeah, one. that was Squiggy, right? Squiggy. Yeah, that was Squiggy. Yeah, with, yeah, that yeah. Was Squiggy, Squiggy never took any of his Laverne and Shirley money and worked on his teeth. He's like, this is my image. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> this is my image. He's dead now, Sam. <laughs> oh, look at oh. him. Squiggy's like, hey, dude, this is my look. Yeah, this is my I look. I got the gap. I'm the guy who, who asks all the questions. Could have made a ton sponsored by Invisalign, yeah, but yeah. didn't. Now, Nobody loves me enough to turn my collar down. This is Sam. how I go out. Sam, when we're done with the pitch? Yeah. I'm going to say to you, let's glide. Yeah, and you're going to stand and up and we're going to freeze. And freeze. Yeah. And freeze. <laughs>
freeze, and then we leave the office of Paramount. You understand? We don't even say goodbye. We just walk out like the deal. It's so. always let's glide. You let's glide. Right. Yeah. And that's that's the that's the rallying. We call. could have some merch for them available. Look at this. It was selling hotcakes. International. International. Again, we talk about how big Pacific Blue is. Uh, don't even get me started on Baywatch. When did that come out? 96. Yeah, it's time for a new it's, one, it's bro. For a reboot. We're, ready. We're over 20 ready. years, man. America's ready for another. All beach these fucking cop. sitcoms set in an office with their heady dialogue. Yeah. Fuck that. Yeah, no, we want action. We and want titties. action. We want titties and jet skis and rooster. I can cat. already see how it plays out. We're gonna, It's going to crush the first one. We're going to be like, man, we're amazed. We have a really large male do- you know, demographic. They love it. And then someone's going to come in and go, like, we like to bring the women into it. So we're going to pull back on the bikinis and we're going to make the woman kind of the lead character. Yeah. And then then we're just, there's going to be a power struggle. Don't in season mess two. with the secret sauce. Don't mess with it. Dude, you. You saw that happen on all of these shows. You're like, we love it. Leave it alone. No, we need more. We need more female-dominated stories. All right. I got to (laughs) glide. Let's glide. Respect. Let's take a break. We got some news coming up, and we'll do that right after this. Well, good news. It's O Rewards Bonus Points Month at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Shop in the store. Do it online to receive points and get rewards sent straight to your phone or inbox. Get two, three, four, even five times bonus points on select purchases. Receive bonus points on select items throughout the store like wiper blades, antifreeze, coolant, parts cleaner, motor oil, and more. Those bonus points can help get you to your next rewards even faster. You'll receive a $5 reward for every 150 O reward points to use on your next in-store or online purchase. Members can check points and rewards online anytime. If you're already an O rewards member and not receiving your rewards, just add an email address or mobile phone number. Get a $10 reward for updating your existing account. If you're not an O Rewards member yet, signing up is easy, quick, and simple. Just do it online at O'ReillyAuto.com or in-store at O'Reilly Auto Parts. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Hey, Adam. I got a rich man, poor man for you. Owns lots of dogs does not know where they are. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. All right, Sam Tripoli's hanging with us. Let's glide. Let's glide. Let's glide into some news. All right. So I want to get your thoughts on this. So in Iowa, a man attacked and beheaded a statue Mm -hmm. uh, that was put up by the Satanic Temple. Oh yeah, yeah. right. And he I know that guy. The, I had him on my show. The uh, the guy who put the thing up. He's just a nerd dork. Yeah, <laughs> Dungeons girl. and Dragons nerd dork yeah. who's yeah. trying to impress fat goth chicks. That's all he's doing. Yeah. Well, this guy, the guy who who attacked and beheaded the statue, has been charged with a felony as a hate crime. Yeah. So here's where we're at. Yep. As a, as a society. Yep. You can burn down whatever city you're living in. You can move to Portland and establish a chop zone and have an autonomous city where there's no cops allowed and shit in the street and burn the police precinct down and topple every statue you like. But you go out to an abortion clinic and sing a hymn and protest, the DOJ is going to fucking snap into action and they're going to fuck your shit up. And you knock over all the statues you fucking want, as long as they're old white guys and no one's going to say a word or do anything. But you knock over Beelzebub, yep. fucking DOJ is going to snap into action and they're going to fuck you up. Now, I have no idea why they think this is a great idea. I think it's basically like, okay, those guys are Trump voters. so It's a demoralization we'll go, campaign. We'll go get them over there. This guy protested in front of a church, uh, in front of an abortion clinic. Okay, send the, send the SWAT team to his fucking farm and pull him out of the house. But you light, 
you can do all the fucking BLM protesting you want, start all the fires you want. You guys, you guys are fine. I mean, you got to find Dawson that Nancy Pelosi clip of like, I, I, I don't collect heirlooms. People do what they're gonna do. Like it's 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 insane, and it's now become obvious. Do you know what I mean? Like you walked onto the lawn in January 6th and the SWAT team's coming to your fucking house. You spent a, a year lighting shit on fire with BLM. No problema. Yep. And I don't know. Now, look, my deal is, is either go after both of them or don't go after either one of them. I just don't want to live in a country my where you're too. highly motivated to go <laughs> after the one that didn't start the fire. Yeah, I or agree. Or knocked with over you. Satan. This is a giant demoralization campaign. If you ever have a moment, watch a, it's an old, old doc. It's called The Capitalist Conspiracy. And it basically talks about how this whole thing is about pressure from above, pressure from below to demoralize us so we beg for martial law. That's the whole thing. That's why the, the rules make no sense. Like, if you cut off the head of a bath mitt, you're a bad guy. But the, the state taking down all of our historical statues totally makes sense it's all meant to demoralize when you when when you have gavin newsom going hey man you're gonna have to pay almost a thousand dollars a month for health insurance but if you're an illegal come here we'll cut your dick off for free that's all right. done on purpose it's done to demoralize you so you don't know if you're coming or going to raise your anxiety so you're so lost you beg the state to come and save you no matter what freedoms you lose and that's once you look at everything through a demoralization campaign it all all starts to make sense. Yeah, and this is uh, my favorite clip ever of uh, Nancy Pelosi. Somebody saying, uh, "Eight year old Nancy Pelosi with her forty year old tits." Yeah, in her bank account and all the her, greatest and all her stocks, of our the life. greatest tra trader. We're always talking about the children and not having a, the children's not having enough money. She she always talks about the kids. <laughs> Meanwhile, it's doing a lot of. Insider trading. Bro, she's been around so long, she, you know, the Kennedys ran a train on her. It's unbelievable. <laughs> but um, when asked uh, what she thinks about uh, people just tearing down statues willy-nilly. Now, keep in mind, in California, if you want to build a dollhouse in your backyard or playhouse in your backyard for a nine-year-old girl, you have to pull a permit. Unbelievable. You, you cannot do anything without a permit, but if you'd like to show up with ropes and a chainsaw at night and just take down a Lincoln statue, they just get out of the way. Yeah, you get a police right. escort. So now it's a pretty clear, she's basically, when she gives this answer, she's basically saying, uh, well, who's doing it? You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's pretty easy. You go... Who's on uh, Who's on the lawn on January 6th? You know, those are Trump guys. Oh, okay, yeah, throw the book at him. Uh, who's tearing down the Abe Lincoln statue? Oh, those are our guys? Oh, okay, yeah, I don't... Yeah. I got a crazy stat for you, Adam. Watch this clip and then, I'll, then give it to me. Again, if the community doesn't want the statue there, the statue shouldn't be there. I don't care that much about statues. <laughs> By a, respectfully, shouldn't that be done by a commission or the city council, not a mob in the middle of the night throwing it into the harbor? People will do what they do. Okay. Well, then why are we pulling permits for our deck if people are just doing <laughs> do what, what they do? Yeah. But just I do what I want. It's crazy, right? But literally, somebody goes, but but shouldn't that be decided by the, the city council? The protesters. People are going to do what they're going to do. Oh, okay, then I should just drive 110 miles an hour to the airport tomorrow morning, right? Like, I'm, I'm doing what I'm going to do, what I want to do. It's crazy, dude. The, the crazy. Uh, would she have said that if they were talking no. about Trump voters? No, you know she wouldn't. Is She's that... admitting that all the nut jobs tearing everything down are her constituency. Well, I mean, if you study BLM and you study, like, how much money they... They fundraised it. All the money went to uh, Act Blue, which was a Democratic fundraising. After Hillary Clinton torpedoed the Democratic Party by forcing herself over Bernie Sanders, they lost a ton of people and they couldn't make any money. So they created this whole situation in which people threw money to, uh, to Act Blue and they funneled it to the Democratic Party. Now, if you study what happened with FTX, and this, again, liberals never hear this in their algorithms to go back to what we start with. <laughs> Dude, the, the Democrats or the Joe Biden and some Republicans too, but mostly Democrats, sent all this money to the Ukraine. Guess what the Ukraine did? The Ukraine took that money, invested in FTX. 
Okay? And guess what FTX did? Took that money and made giant donations to the Democratic Party. It's all this kind of money laundering to fundraise for the Democrats who can't get anyone in America to give them money. They were going to cartels in Mexico trying to raise money uh, uh, last time they were running against uh, Trump. So this is what they do. I just got to tell you one crazy. There's a there's a reporter named Greg Reese. He does incredibly detailed, quick videos, easily digestible. So going back to the vaccines, they were talking about how they they they've done studies that five percent of the batches of vaccines did one hundred percent of the damage, like one hundred percent of the fatalities came from five percent of the batches. And they did a study and they found out that the majority of those batches were sent to red states, and that 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 Kentucky had a nineteen hundred percent uh. Uh, a percentage of the batches went to Kentucky, and like none went to California whatsoever. Oh, good. Oh, thank goodness. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're, like, we're safe. Right. I know. Now, here's the whole thing, and this is the real drama, uh, or trauma, whatever you want to call it. Both. It's the same way with Rolling Stone. When Megan Kelly's telling me to hear the story, I wish I could go, oh, tell me the story. I'd love, <laughs> I'd love to hear their take on whatever it is, but I don't. And what you just said... If you would have told me that shit a few years ago, I'd go, get the fuck out of here, yeah, Sam. Right, right, hang right, out with your right, Armenian right. friends. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, everything's on the table. Mm-hmm. I go, I, I certainly don't. I would not discount, you know. I don't dismiss this You right don't away, dismiss yeah. anything. You think back on that Biden presser from years ago when he went to find the uh, basically the DA of Ukraine and have him fired. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, oh, so uh, you went to go have the DA from uh, Ukraine fired because he was incompetent, but he's also the guy who was looking into your son who was on the board of the Ukrainian energy company. Yeah, it's so crazy, <laughs> so that seems some That seems like a coincidence. And, you, well, your son. And also this thing, especially like you, you watch the legacy media and they're like, well, uh, you know, Republicans are talking about Biden and his, his son. Uh, untrue, untrue stories about, about you know, never proven. And, and like no one ever goes, well, he didn't run a soft swirl yogurt place in Canoga yeah. Park. I yeah. mean, he's a drug addict with no experience that's on the board of a Ukrainian energy company. Is that, <laughs> yep. Does that seem a little... Hey, CNN, a little bit fishy? A yeah. little bit. Yeah. A little bit? Yeah. No. Now nothing's going to China. Is working for his meeting, having high level meetings with all these international rogue uh, nations. Not doesn't seem like something. Like you go, there's nothing. There's just nothing. There's a great, I don't know, just remind me. Remember I gave you that clip, Chris, of, of uh, CNN with the polls? Yeah. Yeah, I think we have it somewhere. <laughs> it's fine. The funny thing is, is when they're doing the news and they're they're going, like they're, they're interviewing somebody, right? And they're going, uh, now, a lot of people on the right say, uh, your son, Hunter, was involved with a money, money laundering campaign, which he was not. Which is not. Would you care to answer? And then they go, yeah, he wasn't. And they go, okay, I'm going to move on to my next right. question. <laughs> like, this is, oh, God, who is this fat fuck? Is this Jeffrey Tubin? It looks like it. It looks like Tubin? I don't think it is. Is uh, that the guy like, who loves, loves Zoom? <laughs> yeah, yeah. My, my joke with Jeffrey Tubin <laughs> is <laughs> once you get caught beating your meat at a, a cor- corporate level on Zoom, we can start calling you Jeff. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you've not earned. You got to earn Jeffrey by keeping your fucking We're pants keep on. It formal <laughs> after that. Yeah, Jeffrey's a little too You're regal for Jeff. you beating your meat on a Zoom call. Um, I don't know who this is. Yeah. I don't know who the guy is. It, do, it he's doesn't. Just passing I, he through. he's given. I filmed this from my TV set, but he's explaining that a lot of Trump voters and independents and how they think about the stolen election or whether it was stolen or not. But he's providing the answers in between. All right, let's just watch it. Sorry. We also asked about whether or not folks think the Biden election of 2020 is a legitimate one, which we know it is. But (laughs) among Republicans, 69 percent, seven in 10 say, no, Joe Biden's election was not legitimate. They're wrong. It was legitimate. 25 percent say yes. Again, among the smaller share of the 60 percent of independents. And again, these are independents who are participating in the Republican caucus. 40% 
Forty-one percent say Biden was legitimately elected. Oh, I love still that. Six in ten of these independents participating today wrongly say that the 2020 election was not. I wish. Oh, I wish I could do this with, with everything. With your girlfriend, with your uh, wife, yeah, that'd like be I great. Could go listen. Uh, I like egg salad sandwiches, but I took a poll, <laughs> yeah. and it turns out 46% of Americans wrongly like turkey <laughs> yeah, yeah, sandwich yeah. and uh, are fools. Uh, and then so I went and talked to independent Americans, and it's a whopping 67% <sighs> wrongly like turkey and it- not... Not yeah. th- not egg salad. And then I talked to a younger demographic. These are Americans under the age of 30. They also foolishly and wrongly. <laughs> incorrectly said. <laughs> incorrectly said that they liked a turkey over the much more delicious egg salad. <laughs> so that's my independent reporting. Yeah. And I'll back to you at the, at the news desk. Well, they first a word from egg salad. Yeah, they yeah. should make movie trailers like that and take the inverse score of the Rotten Tomatoes score yeah. and say yeah. 79% of the public hates this movie and they're wrong. Uh, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I also, uh, this again goes back to kind of what we talked about at the beginning the, like the the legacy media's reaction to people not wanting to see Taylor Swift a thousand times during the football game. And, and you know, Colin Coward, I, I listen to him every day. That's the most re- respectful thing I could say is that I listen to him every day. So he was gaslighting his crowd the other day, yelling at them about sh- they should just shut up about crying about Taylor Swift. And that, mm-hmm. and, and that example is, is what Colin Coward should see. It's like, You cannot gaslight your crowd. You can't do it. They owe you nothing. You owe them everything. Without them, there is no Colin Coward show. And to sit there and be like, you know, we know you don't like it, but a statistic show you do like. It's like, no, dude. This is bread and roses. We're we're meant to be distracted. And Taylor Swift is not just some chick who sings. She's actually a political activist for Joe Biden. And that's the whole thing they're talking about right now. They're, is that yeah. she's going to show up and endorse Biden at the height of everybody watching. So it's not just us poo-pooing our daughter's pop song. It's like we don't want a political activist. Again, and just last thought is, listen, man, look at the NBA. And what they did to their crowd, and they lost a giant market share because they got too political. And the NFL is going to make us listen to the black national anthem, by the way, yeah. in the Super Bowl. What, what, dude, at some point, they're going to fuck around and find out, man, that we don't need. Listen, dude, if I can watch, if I'm like, I love watching football on Sundays, but I can also just hang with my kids. And you, you'll find that out, NFL, if you don't wake up. And also, this division thing, like, oh, you know, Gavin Newsom was all inclusive, but he wants the Amber Alert. He wants the Ebony Alert. Like, you can't do the black national anthem, the white. There's just one national There's anthem. One That's national it. national anthem. Stop it. Stop writing end racism in the fucking end zone, making us all think this must be a big problem. Uh, yeah. It's fucking nuts, and it's going to hurt your bottom line. I want to hear that one more time, though, because it's just so excellent. And by the way, (laughs) if there's anything you don't need to do commentary on, it's a poll with statistics. Yes. Because you would just go... 17% of Americans live under the poverty line. You know, 26% of Americans work less than a 40. It's just literally just we talk to Trump voters. We talk to independents of certain age and whatever. Here's Here's what what they think. Here's what we got. Here's what we got. You don't need commentary in between it. That's what it, it is its own commentary. Yeah, it I becomes agree. an opinion show. It's yeah. the greatest. And, and and by the way, so there's going to be a story about Donald Trump on CNN, and we're going to go there and try to get the news. We're going to try to figure this one out yeah. with this this tub of lard. <laughs> All right, let's do it one more time. This is funny. We also asked about whether or not folks think the Biden election of 2020 is a legitimate one, which we know it is. But among Republicans. 69 percent seven and ten say no joe biden's election was not legitimate they're wrong it was legitimate 25 percent say yes again among the smaller share the 60 percent of independents and again these are independents who are participating in a republican caucus 41 percent say biden was legitimately elected but still six in ten of these independents participating today wrongly say that the 2020 election was not legitimate all right, so six, a majority of independents think this. 
Independent voters think yeah. this. A majority of them. Yeah. Well, you want to look in CNN to why? Yeah. What, what are they? What news do they get? What are they privy to? What have they found out? Oh, CNN. Remember ten minutes ago when you were presenting the document of the fifty-one ex CIA and FBI and intelligence and uh, telling them that Hunter Biden's laptop had all the earmarks of Russian collusion. Maybe that was you guys yeah, doing, for doing sure. a lot of that stuff. Like CNN just plays the Nikki Haley supporters at this point, who are like Democrats who are just trying to to uh, torpedo Trump. That's it. I mean, like, imagine if you had this poll that said this view, this is how people feel, and you play to the smallest percentage of that poll. Like, wh- that's what I'm talking about. It's anti-business business. It's like there's one rule of business. The customer's always right. But when you're getting funded by corporations, who are just going to clean up their 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 red with this Fed money? That you can do stupid stuff like this. All right, this will be a, a I could see this being a B story on. Uh, oh, I'm in. See you, soldiers. I'm in. See you, soldiers. I'm in. You know, I'm in. We'll, we'll weave some politics in. I'm in. You know what I mean? I'm in. And at some point, we'll find out that the guy in the river is a like a big Gavin Newsom reporter. Okay. You know what I mean? And I'll go. I, I, she can't do it, you know, and you'll tell me about my oath. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'll, I'll pull them out. And you we'll know go- what you signed up for? For the people. <laughs> I just hate Newsom so much. And this guy's just campaign manager. Fell off that bridge. Got caught up in the water. We're not here to play games. We're here to do what's right. And then at some point you go, let's glide. Let's glide. All right, and I, that's when I wake up and we take off. And mm-hmm. <laughs> we put on our, our Oakley glasses. Then yeah, the theme song Blades. Plays. Yeah. That yeah. was a cold open. Yeah, we get sponsored by Blades. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Kawasaki will sponsor <laughs> yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, we get yeah, all yeah, the sponsors. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, going to be yeah. part of the pitch. All right, sorry. What anyway, so uh, that guy, uh, Michael Cassidy, he's been charged with a hate crime, now faces five years in prison. Oh, for prison. knocking down Satan. Yeah. The Satan statue. Up. So there's a legal defense fund for him. And their goal is twenty thousand dollars, and it's already at one hundred and twenty-one thousand dollars. So enjoy the extra, and bro. You know what I like? I like then when uh, these crowdfunding sites get involved and like deplatform yeah, guys they disagree bullshit. with. Yep. Like the craziest, the craziest one is they found out. I think it was like some U- Utah cop or something. They found out that he donated to the Kyle Rittenhouse defense fund, and then they fired him or something. It was like they got no boundaries. They have no – like when you're running a company. That's and, what I'm and, saying. And you just go, I fucking love this side and I hate that side. And someone's got to tell you whether you're this, GoFundMe, or Bud Light or whatever, just – Fucking knock it off. Yeah. It's like, you, why are you disrespecting the people that have all the money? I mean, we're, uh, not that one person is more important than the other, but from a business point of view, you should play to the people that have all the money. It's how you keep your, your I business t- afloat. I, yeah. I, yeah. Well, tell it to Sports Illustrated in the Los Angeles Times. Yeah, I mean, it's just ridiculous. And then you have all these people crying. It's like, yeah, because you were, you, you have that what the Lorenz chick crying about all the firing going, yeah, man, because you're all just uh, attack dogs for these people and you are disrespecting your listeners. And, it, and it's like this, no, like, like, it's just unbelievable to me that Sports Illustrated thought that people, and I like fat chicks. I'm into big chicks. That's what Most I like. Most Armos are. Yeah, we do. We <laughs> like it. I can get into it for other reasons. But you, what you've said is like you've stopped playing to your base, which was guys, and you started catering in the hopes of getting women to p- tune in, which they were never going to do. I don't, I don't think it's in the hopes of getting women or even attracting new viewership like is I it just, just scores on the de it, it, the, the asg uh, the esg scores it's it's like there's like a cocktail crowd right and you could say to the cocktail crowd like um there's a new york and like kind of an la cocktail crowd right and you'd go um listen uh, Larry the Cable Guy, back to Larry Cable. He's got a book idea. You wanna, you wanna do it? And they'd go, No, let's do one with Tignataro. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And you'd go, uh, But Larry the Cable Guy's much 
better on and bigger audience. You're probably going to sell a lot more units. Yeah, but I got a cocktail party tonight, and I want to talk about working with Tig Nataro. I, I agree. And, and they're like, I love Tig. Yeah, and and but what about Larry the Cable Guy? I don't want to fucking say I'm working with Larry the Cable Guy. At a, at a so cocktail right. party on either in either Beverly Hills or Manhattan, right? Santa Monica, right? So they go. I know we're not going to get more fucking dudes wanting to see fat chicks in bikinis or trans tuckers in bik- bikinis or what, whatever it is. I, I nobody wants. I know they don't want that, but I got to go to a cocktail yep. party yep. and I got to talk about the shit I'm doing. And I'm not just going to talk about I do buy sell Bud Light. Because I'm a 31-year-old chick, and I live in Manhattan, and I got to go, go to fucking cocktail party. So I got to talk about all the fucking righteous shit I'm doing, and working with the blue-collar comedy crew is not going to fucking impress anyone at this cocktail party. And having a, a, a you know, Larry the Cable Guy writing a tome is not going to fuck. I got to talk about these people. And they go, all right, well, you're not going to sell as so many units. And I go... I don't care. I got a party. Yep. That's. Yep. I think that's the cool where kids it comes think from. I'm cool. That's right. And I don't care. And then at some point, you don't have a job to go back to because you fucking tanked the L.A. Times yeah. and Sports Illustrated. That's not what they were thinking yeah, about. Now you're going to have another writer's strike where you're getting paid peanuts because no one watches or listens to your stuff. Right. And but you don't care because I mean you do. That's the biggest problem I have with most of this stuff is like. Most of these guys I know behind closed doors are bitching. And then they go on social media and they virtue signal because they know they'll never get hired if they're really honest with who they are. But guess what? You're not getting hired anyways. That's my point. Right. So you might as well go down. <laughs> you might as well just be like in the major, just <laughs> blasting away trying to take out as many with you. I just don't get it, man. It's just really sad. And it's not good. And it's not working. And we just all sit there. And just act like the the place is on fire. Like L.A. Hollywood is never going to be the same because Uh you guys have ran off everybody. That's why. All right, one more. All right, so um, the CEO of Starbucks had an uncomfortable call call with uh, the investors recently because, I mean, this is the biggest season for Starbucks, usually the end of the year. You got the pumpkin spice, you got the red cups, you got the holiday season. Well, he said that there's actually a traffic downturn in this quarter. We didn't... um, our projections aren't going to hit and the reason being is the uh, sort uh, source of friction from the middle eastern markets and in the u.s where people from both sides have been boycotting starbucks mm. and the reason was last last year um the workers union for starbucks they they put out like support for Palestine, Palestine, yeah, uh, right, and right. then Starbucks went and like, whoa, 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 we have, we don't want to take a stance on this at all. What are you guys doing? Yeah, and so, and they, they were using like the logo for Starbucks to create support for Palestine. Like, stop mm-hmm. doing this. Like, I know you're our union, but we don't, as a company, we don't want to take a stance. We just want to serve coffee, mm-hmm. please. And so they end up suing each other, right? So Starbucks, hold on, the employees sued Starbucks. Starbucks sued the employees. Yeah. So uh, so Starbucks sued the employees like because they said that this isn't us like we don't we don't want to take a stance and then the employees the employees sued Starbucks um, because uh, it, this is great by the way they said um, they said that they are disregarding other people's pain oh uh, yeah oh yeah that should do well in a legal court yeah, it, yeah you were a meanie yeah that's right <laughs> that's basically what so, it was so 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 it's that. It's this issue, which is an insane issue, but it's not that every time I go to Starbucks, I have to look at a, a flag that tells me about anal. Is that what it's about? It's like, it's like, it's all politically active. And it's like, this is what you don't understand. And the NBA is like with the shut up and dribble. It's like, dude, if I went to a restaurant and my waiter constantly give me their political views, I'm not coming back to that restaurant. We do political shows. So people come to hear our political views. That's why we do well, because right. it's a political show and they want to hear it. I don't want to hear your thoughts on Palestine or Israel at McDonald's. I agree. Yeah. So, so yeah, the workers united, so they said uh, that you, Starbucks defamed us by implying that they support uh, terrorism and violence. What mm. are you... It's so. just, it's, regardless of where you are on that stance, it is insane to me that you think you could sue your your the person who pays you to work because they don't want to hear your mouth. Like, 
This is just this new generation, dude. I love it. Yeah. But I love it when the woke eat their own. Oh, yeah. Starbucks all the time. Yeah. kissing woke ass for so, all these years, and now the chickens have come home to yeah. roost. I love it. So the CEOs, If I was coffee bean, I'd be like, our motto, fuck your politics. Yeah. Come get coffee. Please. Right. I, I, I wish more places were like that. So, yeah, Starbucks. Um, so the CEO is trying to tell the investors, like, look, we don't take a stance on any of this. We are just completely neutral, um, and we just don't want to have an opinion on this at all. Like, there was one Starbucks in New York that was painted, like, graffitied with uh, pro-Palestine graffiti, uh-huh. and customers accused the company of standing against Israel. Like, so there are boycotts from both sides, mm. yeah, well, they, I mean, they got hit. Starbucks has been anti-white people. That's the blue hairs everywhere. And it's just like now everybody's like, uh, oh, boo. you know, it's like these Harvard people like, oh, my God, you're anti Jew. Well, you were fine when they were anti white. Like, I mean, it's just ridic- like, again, the woke eat the woke. That's what happens. If you're fine with them going after one thing, it's like w- when all the pro choice people were like, OK, with mandatory vaccines. It was going to come back and get you, man. It's going to yes. come back and bite you once you. And that's why, like, back when the ACLU was actually doing good work and wasn't just a Soros uh, pit bull, you know, they would defend the worst of the worst, like a pedophile, right? And like, we all hate pedophiles, but you have to make sure that pedophiles' rights are totally taken care of because the minute. The minute you're okay with the law not being filed with them, they'll come around and use it on you. It's the exact same way. You have to defend the worst of the worst yeah. when it comes to law because it will be eventually be used on you. Right. I know. I, I, And I find it, you know, I think about it like hypothetically, you know, and you, you see it with, with gov- government, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll be like uh, – you guys want to impeach Mayorkas? What Mayorkas? You, never, you just got done impeaching Trump twice. Yeah, you do, what does impeaching do even do anymore? It doesn't Nothing. do anything. But the point is, is you can't sit there and be outraged that somebody's trying to impeach Mayorkas when you just got done impeaching the other president two times. It's yeah. just it's going to fuck you up. It's For gonna, nothing. It's going to come back, yeah. and that's that's how it's going to it's going to work. Precedents. Yes. All right, let's uh, let's wrap it, Sam. Sam's done enough here. <laughs> I gotta get my kids. Hey, let's glide. Let's glide, bro. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I'm trying to think if I like the bro at the end. Let's give me a couple clean let's glides, and then let's do a couple let's glide, bro. Or maybe that could be your tagline. You know, adding the bro. Le, or right, let's get a couple. Oh, no, points. here's how it goes. I go, you go, let's glide. And I go, let's glide, bro. And then we do the funny thing with, I told you about the bro as we fade oh, off. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. I told you I hated the bro. And then yeah. we just, he shows bickering as we're yeah, laughing yeah. off into the sunset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we really like each other, yeah, yeah, but we yeah. argue all what the time. What did I tell you about the bro? Yeah, it's, a, we're wa- it's a fade. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fade yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Silhouette yeah. walking yeah, yeah, down, yeah, 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 the light yeah, yeah, on the other yeah. side. Yeah. All right, let's try that. Okay, let's let's see if we can just get a clean, clean one. So I'll go. Uh, so you don't want me to say I'll, bro? I'll do the first. You do the bro. Okay. And then it'll be the end. Okay. Let's glide. Let's glide, bro. What I tell you about the bro? Uh, so, uh, We're so, not teenage boys. Uh, uh, sorry, man. I just it's my thing. Well, it's yeah, my home. Yeah, yeah, but I've, we've talked about it before. Hey, you're buying lunch today. Uh, okay, bro. this time. <laughs> <laughs> and then freeze, freeze with the laugh. Okay, good. <laughs> That's it. good. Got That's how we, yeah. we go out with the free. Roll yeah, credits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Roll yeah. credits. Just as a chicken in a bikini kind of roll blades past us, freeze on tits, we're good oh, to go. Right, that, yeah. right, right. We do a move where you start walking, you, you peel off your yeah. jet ski tour, and I pull yeah. you back. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, back here, bro. All right. Uh, it's uh, the show on uh, Rumble's called Doom Scrolling. Sam Tripoli. And then uh, the pod is Conspiracy Social Club, a.k.a. Deep Waters as well. Live dates coming up. Go to Sam Tripoli. Uh, pretty, spelled pretty phonetically. <laughs> Sam Tripoli. Dot com and find out all the live dates. Thank you. I'm going to be in Vegas at Jimmy's Club February uh, 22nd. Go to amcroll.com for all the live shows. Until next time, Sam, for Sam and Chris saying mahalo. Mahalo.